race to go before Karnataka goes to the polls and the BJP and Congress are rolling out that list of candidates for the state elections. Minutes after the Congress released the first set of candidates, what we are seeing at this point in time is that several protests, several across also the districts, protests have erupted. What you're seeing at this point in time is that the Congress leaders, the loyalists and the supporters, they're demanding answers from Chief Minister Siddharamaya as well as the Congress chief that we are talking about, uh, Parameshwara. But as soon as the list was released, Signs of a rift emerging as disgruntled Congress party workers accuse the top leaders of nepotism. In many constituencies, many aspirants for all these seats. Unfortunately, we can only give one person. So hopefully I'll talk to uh, everybody. We will try and talk to everybody. Never in the history the Congress has inducted any new face so far. Only the successors of the same family. It is not just nepotism that shadows the candidates. Mirror now exposes how both parties, the BJP and the Congress. Watching the Urban Debate, Mirror now, I'm Souza. Thank you for joining us. It's very simple, viewers. Over the last several days, nearly a week, we have spent time talking about why there's such high instances of crime in our country and why we don't have a better handle on criminals. Just today, both the Karnataka Congress and BJP announced their list of candidates. And lo and behold, the number of people accused of various crimes in both of those lists. Let me take you through those numbers. In the first list of candidates announced by the BJP, out of the 72 candidates that were announced, there were 19 with criminal cases against them. That's 33%. Out of that... 13 with serious criminal cases against them. At least five who've gone to jail for corruption, including the chief ministerial candidate, Mr. B.S. Yadirappa. The Congress list not to be left behind or too far away announced a, can a list of candidates of 218 for all of their seats, out of which 48 have criminal cases currently open against them. That's 32%. There were 23 people with serious criminal cases against them, and that's 16%. And these serious criminal cases are rape or murder, in some cases, corruption and bribery. This is our problem. For as long as political parties are constantly going to field people with criminal histories and backgrounds, and we're going to vote for them, we have absolutely no business then to sit around saying, why is there so much crime in our country? Because we put the criminals in charge, that's why. And the time is now to question these political parties and ask them why winability or winning elections is the only thing they care about. And it's also this point now when we'll give you information through our partners like ADR, where you can decide never to vote for a Netha who is a Netha until proven guilty. Joining me on the show today, Major General Anil Varma, the head of the Association for Democratic Reforms. ADR actually is at the forefront of providing India with information like this. Arima Sundaram is an advocate with the Supreme Court. S. Srinath, spokesperson of the Karnataka BJP. Surendra Srivastava is the national president of Lok Satta. Anil Kumar is a spokesperson of the Karnataka Congress Committee and Arthi Jarat is a senior journalist. I welcome all of you to this conversation. Uh, I'm going to start with... Uh, with, of course, Major General Anil Varma. Anil Varma, if you look at, look at the numbers right now, and a lot of the candidates with uh, criminal histories are being repeated. These are the same candidates that were fielded uh, five years ago in the previous election. Is the problem the fact that our politicians are banking on winability and they don't care about criminal history? Uh, yes, uh, you've already given the statistics of the lists which have been released by BJP and Congress. And uh, we see that the same 30 to 34 uh, percent uh, average remains. And that is constant in all our elections as far as the, uh, whether you take it for the Lok Sabha or for the state assemblies or the other state assemblies. Now, uh, this is very unfortunate that uh, the 
political parties uh, do not consider uh, uh, criminal cases against uh, the candidates who are allotted tickets as a serious matter. The only thing they consider is winnability. And uh, we uh, are really given no choice. We have to uh, select, uh, you know, whoever the candidates are fielded by the parties. Mm. So it is, uh, you know, unfortunate that the political parties, uh, I do not know how they can be pressurized into fielding candidates without criminal records, uh, especially the ones who have heinous crimes uh, against them. Uh, we had put out a report uh, in August last year about the uh, number of candidates which were fielded uh, by the political parties having specifically crimes related to women. This is mm. in context of what is going on for the last two, three days in our country. And uh, you will be surprised to know that uh, almost 20% of them have got, uh, you know, cases against uh, women, uh, criminal cases against women. They have committed offenses. So uh, if the party bosses are the ones who decide uh, whom the tickets are to be given, uh, it is for the public, the civil society organization, the voters, unless they create pressure on the political parties not to fill such candidates or there is some better, you know, transparency and democratic way of allotment of tickets to the candidates mm -hmm. who contest elections, uh, I, I'm afraid this thing will carry on the way it is going on. And it is about time that uh, we as citizens and voters raised our voice against this. Otherwise, the type of incidents that we have seen will continue to happen. Mm. And people with the national flag are going to rallies to support uh, the rapists. And amongst them are the politicians. Well, so let's, let's ask the politicians these questions. Mr. S. Srinath, very interesting point being raised by Anil Varma of ADR. He says, how do we pressure political parties into not giving tickets to criminals. If we just consider that question, let's pressure political parties into not making criminals in charge of the law. It's mind-boggling. But I want to ask you this, Mr. Srinath. Uh, are you aware of how many people within the BJP have been given lists yeah. who have gone in and out of jail on cases of corruption? Uh, and why is it that these people have been given tickets again? Can you explain you to me one more time? Is it yeah, you see, basically, Mr. Va I fully agree with Varma. I have no issues on that. Mm. Uh, if a person is punished under law and it is proven that the crime has occurred, then certainly we will not give. We are as sensitive as you and Mr. Varma are about these particular cr uh, criminals getting uh, uh, tickets. But the problem what happens is, there are political movements, there are different activities, sometimes it may be a frame up. All this happens and the politicians so, no, so, are at the center of all okay. different kinds so of... So you are uh, telling me that Mr. G. Show, Somshekar Reddy so who went to jail in Bellari uh, for bribing a judge, we should wait for a judge to call him guilty. Mr. K. S. Naidu who went to jail when he and his son were caught red-handed by the Loka Yukta no. offering a bribe. Mr. Krishnaya Shetty who went to jail for a scam. Mr. C.C. Patil in your party who was watching pornography inside yeah, the, the assembly the, hall and Mr. Yadurappa. All of these people, let's just wait until all these cases play out? Yeah, so far inside plan? the hall is concerned. It, it, no, no, one thing I'll tell you. I don't think should, we should take up Yadurappa because he has, none of the charges have been proved. Mm. And he went to jail because of the, I mean, none of the chief ministers have gone. But that day, legally, they created a history by doing it, which was not fair. And okay. uh, he has been exonerated from all those charges. And no charge has been proved till date. Mr. When it is not proved, you can't call I a think, crimin uh, uh, criminal till the charges this, are proved. Uh, this is an excuse of the political they parties to, be very clear on this. to wait for the punishment to be given. No, because Indian the judiciary doesn't see, function the problem, in a, in a manner in which figure. it should they be. The, you see, they, so basically no, 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 the idea no, should second. be now, you know, yes. this is 20 you years so, old fight between figures, civil society then, and the political parties. Because first time when we went to Supreme Court, we got an order. Now we have been able to expose the criminals in politics, but we have not been able to defeat them. Now the time has come when the Supreme Court will have to again intervene if the political see, parties don't do it. Part of the civil society. The people who, are, who against whom the charges have been framed yes. by any court, yes. against, at least in the cases of heinous mm. crimes, mm. they should be barred from uh, what, pa what, participating what, in the election. According to you, what would qualify as heinous crimes? Heinous crimes are five types, basically. Rape, murder, cr uh, corruption, 
land grabbing and cheating. These are the cases which are apparently very heinous and they should be barred from, uh, if the charges are framed by any court, exactly, we should be barred from you. fighting the election. Let me bring in Mr. Arima Sundaram. He's a, he's a brilliant legal uh, mind advocate with the Supreme Court. Mr. Sundaram, thank you for joining us. Where do you stand on this? My problem is with having people with, with criminal cases, heinous criminal cases against them, constantly given tickets, voted into power, and then put in charge of the law so that they can change the law to suit their benefit. Mr. Sundaram. Well, Fay, I think your concern is the concern of uh, every person who thinks about the kind of people who are governing. Okay. The fact is we have to look at four different aspects here. It's not an easy problem to solve, and I'll tell you why. There are four aspects. Number one, the first rule is everyone is deemed to be innocent until proved guilty. Now, that is something which stands. Number two, there's the Representation of People's Act and the Constitution itself which makes ineligible people who have been convicted of the crime. Perfect. Now, if you want to change that to people who are still being charged with the crime, it will require the same legislators whom we're talking about amending the law and bringing that in as the law. Number three, unfortunately, and this is a very sad reflection in India, that a minuscule proportion of the cases where people are charged, whatever the offenses be, are actually convicted. This maybe reflects on the nature of prosecution, this reflects on the manner in which they are able to get witnesses to turn hostile, this reflects on a lot of things. But truth be told, it's a very minuscule proportion. So many a person says, look here, I've been charged, but I've been uh, acquitted. And let's not forget, once a person is acquitted, it's deemed as though he never committed the offense. You have these three things. And on the fourth, and the most worrying thing, what really troubles me is, I am a true essential Democrat. And as a Democrat, whether we like it or not, we say the will of the majority will prevail, and especially in an election. Mm. Is it not sad? Is it not an unfortunate reflection that many of these people who are getting the seats to contest those elections are getting those seats because the party believes they can win those seats, because the party believes that the people are going to vote for them. And if these people are voting for people with such criminal records, and the people with criminal records are being put forward by the party because the party doesn't want a losing candidate. The party feels these chaps are going to win. Mm. Now, that really reflects on the people themselves. And let's put the blame where it really lies. The people, the man who's popular, I don't want to come in with names, but there are people who are so popular and they all have criminal charges against them. The, uh, the uh, voter there, the franchise, it knows very well that uh, these people have criminal charges and yet is, would rather vote for them than for anyone else. So let's also not forget that in our democracy, unfortunately, many of our voters find no fault in a person with criminal charges against him standing for elections. That heinous crimes, people charged with heinous crimes, especially crimes of corruption, mm. should not be allowed to stand for elections, I fully agree with, because once it gets to a charge sheet stage. But it's equally very sad that those people stand People know that they are being charged with those crimes yes. and people still vote for them. Absolutely. And their party puts them up because they are more likely to win that election. I think it reflects on us. It reflects on us as the people of India. You're very right. Arti Jarrett, here's the other question. The fact that our process of election, the amount of money that is used is so corrupt that it's only possibly uh, the criminals who can succeed at it. This is why Kuldeep Singh Singer uh, actually wields the kind of power that he does in Unao, because if we look at his history, he was with the BSP and then with the SP and then with the BJP. He's an election winner, which is why none of these parties have the guts to remove him from that seat or to suspend him from their party. And this is the problem. The root, of, root cause is that criminals are candidates, Arthi. No, absolutely. And this is where this whole thing of uh, election funding comes in, this question that is being it's been debated on for so many years, but no decision, no consensus has been reached on whether there should be a, you know, government-funded elections or how do we manage to keep election expenses down. They are spiraling. With every election, the costs are getting higher. So today, unless you have money, you can't win an election. And parties don't fund elections. Parties don't fund their candidates, the candidates fund themselves. You know that the BSP, for instance, is famous for selling tickets 
to the highest bidder because you know that their rule is very simple that we'll sell the ticket to you you fund your own campaign we don't have to fund you so you know if, if you're rich enough to afford uh, to fight the election we'll give you the ticket and that's how it works uh, BSP is very open about it the other parties are more covert about it but it's the same logic that applies and we you know we hear cases of elections costing 10 crores 15 crores even 20 crores why even a panchayat election now runs into one to two three crores so you know if you don't have money you can't fight an election and how do you make money most of this is black money so you make it through <coughs> criminal means you make it by being corrupt and then once you get elected you have to make up the money yeah, that you, you spent recover on the fighting costs the election. That you have invested. So you continue to be corrupt. Right. You, that's right. So, so you continue to be a criminal. You continue to be corrupt. So let's, let, let's ask Anil circle. Kumar. And, you know, unless we all sit down. Yeah, I, I want to ask this question of Anil Kumar of the Congress yeah. Party. Mr. Kumar, how did, you, how did the Congress Party decide on its, uh, on its candidates? The 48 people with criminal cases against them and the 23 with serious criminal cases against them. On what basis did you choose these people? On their winability? On the amount of money they had to fund their own elections? Because you're scared of them? What were your reasons? Uh, see, firstly, uh, you know, what happens in the <coughs> local elections are it may be, uh, you know, uh, in the MLA or probably like, you know, in Rajya Sabha elections. Mm -hmm. uh, the voters plays a very important role as they've been... Uh, Am I audible to you? Yeah, loud and clear. I still don't, uh, I mean, go ahead. Justify why you have 23 people with serious criminal cases against yeah, them so on your candidates list. See, no, see, none of them are being, you know, convicted or being like, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not, uh, you know, correct to say that like, you know, they've been uh, still under the charges, they've been waited to being heard. And like, you know, uh, that's the one reason where like, you know, party is basically showing the interest to give to them. At the same time, the demand comes so from the local people. Tell me something, tell me something. Anil Kumar, uh, the voters who your list today of them. the Congress party actually had your own workers protesting against you. They broke chairs, they vandalized your own offices, they burnt tires across the state because they were unhappy with the people that you chose. See, uh, so see, are you telling th me that, that is, there are no that, that choices totally in the state of that Karnataka totally except these 23 criminals? With heinous cases against them? See, the, this is not... The, see, the, 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 the chairs are, which have been broken in the Mandya district, mm. this is not because of the criminals who are standing for the elections there. It okay. is because of the people are showing the anger that they are not getting the tickets for their leader. <coughs> mm. But you gave the tickets to criminals. That's okay. People are happy with that. Sorry? I you think you, you gave tickets to criminals thing, yeah. and people are happy with that. No, no, no. You should see, note again, one more thing. Uh, see, firstly, like there we is condemn. There are 65 firstly, cases like pending in ACP uh, those, against those kind of, uh, uh, Chief Minister Mitra Sidharamaya. Mr. Mr. Srinath, if you want to talk, we'll the, talk. G. Somasekar Reddy okay, of Bellari okay. District uh, right. was part of, is one of the Reddy brothers who was accused of yeah. the largest iron ore scam, yeah. illegal mining in the country. You've given him no, a ticket. No, not he. Why? His brother. The Reddy His brothers, brother. they are called, His together. It was not they actually Somjaka. worked Somjaka together Reddy quite well. IM... Now, why does he have a ticket? He Please tell IMF, me. He was in this one. It, yeah, but uh, it was his elder brother who was in the, involved. And th there is no case against this man. Nothing is proved till now. Except bribing a judge. And secondly... Except bribing a judge in the favor of his brother. Including the watch. I would request him to... the watch issue. And nothing has happened on that. I would request him to cross-check his records. Our case goes to ACP. Within 10 days it is taken up. And Sidramaya's case is pending from last four years. They are keeping it low. Mr. Somshekar Reddy is also facing the severe charges against him. At the same time, there are people who have been supporters, who have been friends, who have been relatives from the Reddy brothers gang. Everybody think, is facing uh, the allegations. Let us talk about Sidramaya. And they have been uh, the jailed. Not, uh, they have been uh, jailed. Can we talk about Sidramaya? 65 Very cases, uh, including the watch case. Well, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Watch case we can is pending you, you in the you, uh, Sir, it is a democratic country. Ah. Everybody you know, has a voice. Are, you are, you I'm going to open up the phone lines right now because I want my viewers at this point to realize how ridiculous this is. You all are sitting here arguing as to which of the two of you is worse. Let me tell you that the percentage of of criminals facing charges in your Come parties on, is absolutely please, almost equal. 33 for the BJP and 32% for the Congress. What are you even arguing about?
What are you arguing about? That the fact that you gave out tickets no, the, based on caste, Madam, the, the fact the that you gave out tickets based you, on criminal not, history, criminal. how many how many tickets See, did you give out to the Lingayats today, Mr. Srinath? Lot of Mr. Srinath, how many tickets did you give out to Lingayat uh, uh, candidates today based on five. caste? Please tell me. And in those five, how many? Five are no, no, no. Case, okay, we won't talk. Acha, okay. You want to let go of that? How many tickets did you give out today based on caste, Mr. Srinath? And dynasty. Don't forget family connection. We'll go to that as well. Mr. Srinath, how many tickets they to the Lingayats today? Connections. How many caste-based candidates did you hand out today? Please tell me. Huh? Is that is that what all the data mining no, has told you to do? To focus we, on the caste? We, no. We, no? We, how no, many tickets we, to the Lingayats? Tell me the number. We go and the suitability of the candidate for the constituency. <laughs> no, we have not calculated. I have not calculated. Right. Mr. Anil Kumar, Mr. how many tickets given to family members of existing politicians? Nepotism is something your, your party particularly enjoys. Shall we put out the list? We'll put out the list. See, like we, we have, Let's put out the list as, of nepotism. As, 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 as we are an inclusive party approach, mm. as we are an inclusive party approach, we consider each and every one and like, you know, we have taken every community, every people, every worker who has been working for the party for a long duration. We have given every opportunity to each and every person. Like if you look at... Today's Sir, Anil like Kumar, Mr. first Krishna of all, your Shetty own party is protesting being, against uh, you. you. know, involved in the land scam. No, no, don't tell me about the BJP. Talk to me about your own party. Tell me why party workers in Mandya are protesting against their own party. You are telling me that you made room for everybody. See, By everybody, do you Mandia, also mean people, criminals? The people in and, Mandia are protesting and sons and daughters of your politician friends. Got the because that's what you have it done. When you say everybody, what you mean is that sorry? you made sure that Ramalinga Reddy's daughter, Somaya Reddy, got the Jainagar constituency. Mr. Krishna, Krishnappa's daughter, Priya, uh, Priya Krishna so Krishnappa, got the they're Govinda being, Raja uh, constituency. You made sure son, that son, Jay Chandra's son got a con see, got a ticket. A Mr. Malikarjun Kharge's daughter has uh, got a got a ticket. Tickets. So you found they're when you say you made room for everyone, for you made long, room long for time. the sons and daughters of your friends, and you made room for criminals, which is why your own party is upset with you. Is that not true? Is that not true? <coughs> Mr. Anil Kumar. All right, Mr. Kumar has decided not to answer. Colonel Gomes on the phone line from Hello? Pune. Colonel Hello. Gomes, go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, um, I've been wanting to congratulate you for your award long time back, but I've got a chance today. Thank you. Go ahead, though. What's your question? Uh, or what's the uh, point you'd like uh, to make? I just wanted to tell you that I've been in the Army for 34 years, mm. and when I appeared for my SSB, that's a selection board, Yes. Uh, yes, yes, go Faye, ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, Faye, when I'm in the army for 34 years, and when I joined, even if I had visited a police station and my name was recorded there, I would have been rejected. Hmm. You know, that, that's a, 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 a given. Yes, yes. So if we can do that kind of background check, why don't we do the same kind of due diligence on the people that we vote for? And Mr. Sundaram is very right, sir. We have to, as voters also, be careful about how we are going to use our vote. So basically, Freddy, there is a, this is a very complex problem. It's not as simple as uh, it is understood. See, there is a definitely demand of criminals in politics. The three questions are to be answered by us. One, why criminals come into politics having yes. achieved whatever they wanted to achieve. Second question is why parties of efficiency and success yeah. in criminality. Why yes. why pa why parties give them vote uh, give yes. them tickets. Mm. Third question is why people vote for them. Yes. I think these are the fundamental issues which is arising out of the systemic failure which we have adopted. Mm. The first pass post system uh, coupled with the parliamentary form of system is creating this kind of incentive mechanism where the politics where the money power muscle power vote bank politics and the uh, dynasty politics is flourishing. Yes. So I think we need to relook at the system uh, itself of election, not only election, but the formation of the government. Mm. Therefore, Lok Sattah has been suggesting for many years that uh, we need to look at whether we can have directly elected chief minister coupled with mixed proportional representation system of forming the legislative assembly. I think this will create some kind of disincentive mechanism of criminals and all these people to come into politics. But 
ultimately politicians themselves will have to do this. So I think the fight is a long drawn fight, it's not going to happen so easily. Therefore, the first step is, shall we not now consider going to Supreme Court and asking them the people who are charged with at least heinous crimes should be barred from elections. Mr. Sundaram, do you agree uh, your legal opinion on that? Should we approach the Supreme Court and say people who have been charged with <coughs> heinous crimes I, should be barred? I think, I think that's a bit of an unfair thing to do because the Supreme Court, while it is taking care of so many issues in the country today, mm. cannot be considered as a panacea for every single thing. You see, we have a Constitution of India. We have a Representation of People's Act. The Supreme Court did the maximum it could within that framework in the famous judgment where they said that people who are convicted, even if appeals are pending, etc., they cannot stand for elections, they cannot uh, continue in parliament, they have to give up their seats. Now, this is something which the Supreme Court could do within the four corners of the statutes. The statute has to be amended to bring in certain kinds of crimes where charge sheets have been filed, hmm. where they, the, the court itself has found prima facie that they need, that they are charged with such heinous crimes carrying very important, I mean, you mentioned a few, rape, murder, etc. And, and I would include corruption definitely amongst those. Yes. That in that case, there has to be a complete statutory uh, amendment. Now, who's doing that amendment are the legislators, and whether they're willing to do so or not, that's the moot question. They are not. The second, and where I feel the courts can play a role in this, where I feel the courts must play a role in this is, I think that if any sitting legislator is charged and there's a charge sheet which is filed against him, there must be a fast-track court by which that trial should be completed within six months. Appellate process also completed within mm. a fixed period of three to six months after that. Yes. We have fast-track courts for various other crimes. I feel any charges carrying possible imprisonment of more than two years, because that's what disqualifies them, should <clears throat> be put on a fast-track court. That, the court, I feel, is the one which can control. It's the court which can insist that these fast-track courts be put up for politicians and any, any legislator, sitting legislator who's charged from the date of charging to the date of conclusion of the trial should be six months. Appeal thereafter should be finished within another three to six months maximum. If right. that is done, there is at least some way that the courts can certainly contribute to repair the damage to an extent possible. Dr. Ravi Chandran on the phone line from Chennai. Please go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. I think... A criminal, if he is charged, should stand on an election, but he should not use the party symbol because the symbol gives him more powers. Why can't he stand as an independent even if the party chooses it? And in that context, let the party not put up their candidate. Let him be an independent candidate till he comes out of all his charges. Well, while that might be a fair symbol, suggestion, Dr. Chandran, I think the whole point is that the party likes the criminal at this point and they want the criminal to be part of the party. So I, I'm just going to go to Mr. Anil, uh, to, uh, Anil Varma. If, if we go back to what Mr. Sundaram said, that heinous crimes where charge sheets have been filed, how many of those examples do we have in this Karnataka, upcoming Karnataka election at least? Th that is no, what I, I would won't have that to, type you know, of data available. No, from you. Uh, because the Afe, can but I correct that? It's not uh, where charge sheets have been filed, but where they have been charged by the court. Charges. They've been There's charged by the court. Okay, where they've been charged by the court. court. You see, after a charge sheet is filed, Unless the court the then charges. Court. Exactly. Yes, go ahead. Anil Kumar, Anil Varma, go ahead. All the figures that ADR puts out in. You cannot say the charge sheet proves anything. The judiciary has to maintain it. Go ahead. Anil, uh, okay. Anil Varma, go ahead. Judgments. If I may be allowed the to crime, speak. Crime is yeah. Mr. Mr. Shrinath, yeah. Mr. Shrinath, please allow me. Somebody yeah. else is. Mr. Varma, please go ahead. If you can ask the other yeah, gentleman to kindly. Yeah, okay. See, one is that uh, uh, this is the what Mr. Sundram was saying, I think is also the recommendation of the Election Commission. Uh, the other thing is that all the uh, data which we put out regarding the uh, sitting legislators or the candidates, we take into consideration only the criminal cases on which uh, charge sheet has been prepared and cognizance has been taken of these. Uh, it is not that only if the FIR has been lodged and we are putting out those things. So these percentages of people with criminal cases means cognizance has been taken. 
that is one the other issue which i wanted to highlight and now i'm not in agreement with mr sundram with all due respect is that he is putting the onus on the citizens as to why they are choosing these people what about the government what about the political parties why are they fielding such people just because of the winability factor we have judicial delays we did a study there are cases ranging against the mlas and mps from 10 to 28 years they have done their tenures and gone out the cases are still going on so uh, what are we talking about and we are talking about fast tracking of cases and here you have so many states where they are withdrawing the cases against politicians yes and this is not a new thing it has been happening earlier but now it is blatant and what what fast track courts are we talking about we will see as to how these ones which have been constituted by the supreme court are going to function they the politicians will try all the uh, tricks in the bag which they have to wriggle out of these witnesses will go missing we will see how these fast track cases go so uh, i personally feel this is not the answer the malaise is much deeper and it is the political parties i mean we can say it's a constitutional right and all that and we are in a democracy that is all very fine like i remember and the sakali the leader uh, hmm. that lady she was saying wo to hamare se bribe mangte hain to hum dete hain to kya problem hai i mean this is the answer is this the answer you expect from the politicians even i, I want to bring in arthi jarad here arthi here's here's the problem with all of this don't you think it's slightly suspicious that both the congress and the bjp landed at 32 33% criminals which is the benchmark normally in every election it's almost like an inside understanding that if we both land at about 30% then neither one is worse than the other and the people will just accept us because there isn't another option why are we putting up with this why are we putting up with these parties who think that they can pull wool over our ears and bring criminals in and make them lawmakers look at the look at this suggestion that you bring in a criminal and put them in charge of making laws i know and that's why you find uh, you know as you mentioned at the beginning of the program that's why you find you know cases like the one that happened in unnao you know where the mla has been you know banished for one and a half years to evade arrest and it was only when the court stepped in that he was finally arrested the chief minister didn't dare act against him the police didn't dare act against him this is the problem but you know fe it's a really really tough thing you know how do we as people as civil society how do we bring pressure on political parties to clean up their act and 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 screen their candidates carefully so that they do not field tainted candidates and you know you you've raised a very interesting point about how they landed about 30 to 33% so that they can point say only one third you know two thirds of our candidates are clean they don't have any criminal charges so far, against them yet. <laughs> you know they're all good guys so it's just one third you know that that, that it's it's a it's a very interesting point that you raised <laughs> now but the point is how do we do it i mean adr has been working on this for 20 years every election they come out with these figures and every before every election we discuss it newspapers talk about it you know there are debates and then the election passes and we go back to business as usual till the next election comes up and you know so how do we do it i mean i really have no solution i do think that you know funding is a key component of uh, mm. you know this need to get criminals or corrupt uh, you know tainted yeah, politicians yes. into the fray and i think you know we need to look at this question of election funding the election commission has raised it again and again that you know shall we consider a government funding for election shall you know they 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 put limits on uh, the amount every candidate can spend but we find candidates spending way more than the limit yes. so you know how do we tackle so, this so, so there are limits for what the candidates can really spend but there's this. no limit for If, what the party can spend so the party invariably winds up spending a lot more than the, the candidates because spend. there's no absolutely. regulation sara on the phone line from delhi sara go ahead absolutely hello hello go ahead yeah can you hear me yes yeah hi i think ma'am has just mentioned exactly what i wanted to ask the senior journalist the madam she exactly got on to what question what what i was going to ask nevertheless i'll repeat my my question is how to all the people sitting out there all the expertise 
That's a very practical question. How will you stop a citizen from contesting the election who has a criminal record? Now, don't differentiate into heinous and non-heinous, which the law says. I'm only asking a simple question, which is very complex. How will you stop a citizen? Because it's, a, it's his or her democratic right. Yes. To stop contesting I, the election despite having a criminal record. I need a very pinpoint answer to it. That's it. Well, I think that the answer here can only lie in the hands of the people. If we publicize this information enough and as a, as a population, if we decide not to vote for these people. Remember, they're being fielded because of winability. If we take away their winability, that possibly would then discourage these parties from fielding criminals because there's no conscience, let's be honest. Neither the Congress nor the BJP feels bad, feels guilty, or in, in any way is ashamed of feeling, fielding criminals in elections. It happens in every election. They proudly go ahead and say, yes, yes, lots of accused, especially accused in heinous crimes, but not proven guilty. So we're fine with it. So they're not even embarrassed. So I think it would be completely a waste of time to expect either of these political parties to grow a conscience in the next one month. What we can do is completely stop voting for these people. And we'll put out that information as much as we can. Now, Mr. Mr. S. Srinath, Katta Subramanya Naidu went to jail after he and his son yes, were please. caught red-handed by the Loka Yukta giving a bribe. He has been given the Shivaji Nagar ticket. Why? Um, uh, he has not been convicted. That's the point. And... Uh, <laughs> if he was convicted, there was no way we could we would have given him. But did the uh, did the Loka Yukta catch him giving a bribe? <laughs> did the Loka Yukta catch him red handed giving getting a giving a bribe? Yes or no? Uh, actually, it is not proved. No, that's what I am telling. See, this is very. Uh, it's basically a very um, <laughs> well. I think uh, sensitive point we are going uh, that unless uh, he is called as a right criminal. Now, right and now. No, but once again, some of these uh, cases are very interesting. No, I'm sure no, our audience would like to hear them. But I think uh, it's important to understand. See, then Supreme Court will intervene, or the courts will intervene and say what we are doing is wrong. We Mr. cannot Mr. refuse on that basis. Mr. Sina, just a minute. Is, unless he's Mr. Sina, so just a minute. So one second, one second. So one second, one second. Mr. Sina, are you suggesting? Are you suggesting yeah. if someone walks into your party office and asks for a ticket, you are bound to give that person a ticket? This is not a fundamental right. You can turn a person no, down, and I understand really. that you turn people down all no, the time. Not really. So what do you mean the Supreme Court will intervene? When was the last time a court intervened in no. whether or not a person got no. a ticket from a political party? Please, Mr. Srinath, please don't put out information that is meant to mislead my viewers. No, now, no, no. Let us, do you know Mr. Srinath or Mr. C.C. Patil? You know Mr. C.C. Patil? Ah. Was watching pornography inside the assembly hall. Yeah, you uh, have given him a ticket. Please tell me why. What was not proven about him watching porn inside the pornography Actually, inside the assembly hall? An an we okay, all saw it. It was on television. Under what circumstances the uh, speaker speaker had an inquiry into the whole thing and cleared <laughs> him? And after that, we have given him. No, no, hang on, hang on. You see, unless he we, was I'm clear, running the. I, I don't know no, if you have a screen in front of you, Mr. Srinath. I'm running the footage on my screen right now of this individual watching pornography inside the assembly hall hmm. mr cc patil okay there's nothing to be proven here no innocent guilty let's leave that aside the fact that he was watching pornography inside what should be a sacred place of governance are you proud that you're giving him a ticket again and what is what is the thought process no, behind giving yeah, him a I'm ticket again please see, explain the to question me. of under what circumstances he opened that particular packet? Under what circumstances, Under what circumstances was he, he watching pornography? Did he know because he was he sleepy, he was bored, <laughs> because he no, wanted he to be aroused he while sitting inside of this hall. Under what there. circumstances was he, was he watching pornography? Are you joking, Mr. Srinath? <laughs> no, ma'am. Let us take it on the reasonable way. Okay, he please. gets a mail. And he gets a bail and he opens it. <laughs> he doesn't know what is there inside, no? At Mr. That time, Mr. Srinath, the, the visual is running on my goes. screen right that now. He watched it for a, a long, a, long period of time. Why should he have yeah, a laptop inside the assembly? And he is watching why it for an extended period of time. What are you saying? You I hope you are not his lawyer. No. Because you make a terrible argument. Now please tell me. There is a visual and running on the screen of an individual who is swiping through <laughs> photographs and watching pornography inside the assembly hall for a very, very long time. Does it give you pride 
to give him a ticket to fight the elections? It doesn't. Does he have a no, lot of money? It doesn't. If he was uh, seeing Does he have a lot of money? Down, I don't think we should have given him a ticket. I okay. fully agree. So, is uh, it because no, he has money or is it because you are afraid uh, of him? Or do you think that the courts will intervene saying, why haven't you given this pornography viewer a ticket? Which, which one is it? Why has he been, been given a ticket? You see, now the, now the circumstances under which happened, he has given some explanation. The speaker has accepted the explanation. That is where it makes a difference. Otherwise, he would have got suspended or dismissed. He which didn't been. happen. So, how I can make, when he is not found guilty, then how I can make him guilty? You see, I am not the judge. If that kind of the, the, uh, judgment remains with me, then whomsoever I like, I will judge him positively. Whomsoever I don't like, I judge him negatively. So, I have no right on that. Can I, I have to go this? by some particular yes. framework, okay. and that is the framework what okay. we are looking for. Yes. I'm let telling me, you, let me come, the let me come to your rescue. <laughs> please, please, <laughs> please, 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 let me come to your rescue. Is fully please, able let, to let manage all his own. You don't have to come to his rescue. I will not. I will not blame the political parties completely in this. Let's understand this. Why? Okay. See, there is a there is a kind of formation of government we require. Each seat is important. So in a competitive politics, winnability becomes very, very important. If you have a directly elected chief minister, I think that incentive is gone. So I think to some extent, I think we must consider that. Hmm. Second is that political parties have not taken the bow to destroy the country, but they have taken a bow to somehow win the elections. So how do we create incentive and disincentive mechanism in the political system to ensure that such people are not welcomed? Hmm. I think that's a, there is a huge political reform but, requirement. But if we look at, if we look at the uh, politics even right now, do we have as, as, view, as viewers they, or as voters the ability something? to shun mm. these people out by not voting for them? Yeah, we have a nota, but I don't think people understand nota, importance of nota. Nota is there already, nota has come in. I think there is a huge progress oh, happening in the last few, uh, last couple of years towards a better democracy. All right, Arti, 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 Arti Sundaram, I'm going to come to you, but I have money on say, the phone. I, I say, I... Okay, Arti, go ahead. Arti, go ahead. Yeah, I, I disagree with this, uh, you know, this proposition that a direct election will automatically solve this problem. Because as we've seen in the United States, you know, this whole Trump election, I mean, look at the kind of questions that have risen about his background and the way the elections were fought. And that was a direct election for the president of the United States. Yes. So I don't think it's that. I think it's really falling moral standards. That is the problem, that we are ready to accept anything because we want to win the election so badly that we will stoop to whatever level, whatever mm. corruption, criminality, whatever is needed to win. That's the problem. It's falling moral standards. Falling moral standards. Okay, money, money on the phone line from Hyderabad. Money, go ahead very quickly. Yes. I want to say yes. that we are the kind of voters who make a Medha particle lose because she's honest and we all know that she has given her life for a social cause and still we make her lose the election because she's not able to dole out money and liquor all around. So it is our fault, the voters' fault. We should be ashamed of ourselves that we may all the lose. In state, so. We have not yeah. given an example of making yeah. a, a, a person like Medha particle win. That's right. so there is no example so, of uh, a voters' uh, honesty. All right. This was also the point that uh, Mr. Sundaram was making, the fact that voters need to be more uh, choosy about who we're willing to waste our vote on or perhaps even treat it with, with more care. Treat the vote with more care. Mr. Sundaram. Unfortunately, it goes further. Unfortunately, it goes further. Many political parties know that they're going to be embarrassed by having people with criminal antecedents. But they know that that is the man who actually has the maximum support in that area. Unfortunately, I don't want to name people, but we know, especially Uttar Pradesh and other places, we know that a person has the maximum support in that area from the voters. And so sometimes a political party, despite the man's criminal antecedents, finds itself compelled to give him the seat because they need to win that seat because they want to form the government. It's as simple as that. Perhaps an answer, Faye, perhaps an answer. Let's understand the legal process slightly. You see, an FIR or a charge sheet is the first stage. Now, 
taking cognizance the moment an FIR is filed the court takes cognizance and the matter goes into further so taking cognizance nothing is proved as yet nothing is even prima facie established at that stage filing a charge sheet again Correct. at the stage the charge sheet is filed that's the police's version of it it's yet to be proved yet to be shown so I can well understand many of these people saying, look at that stage, considering hardly 20% of cases even arise, uh, give re re result in conviction, why should I be barred? Because there's every chance that that's completely false. But then there is a third stage, and that's the stage of framing charges. What is framing charges? The court then takes into account all the evidence, they take into account the complaint, they take into account everything, and the evidence which is there. And they come to the conclusion that unrebutted as the evidence stands, as everything stands before the court, prima facie, this man has committed the crime. Of course, thereafter, this evidence which is placed before the court will be shown. The witnesses whose statements were there sometimes go hostile, which is why many of these result in acquittal. But at that stage, at least, there is judicial application of mind to the entire evidence. And at that time, the judicial application comes to the conclusion shorn of anything else at this stage if we are to deliver judgment taking this to be the evidence as it stands unrebutted then the person is guilty now the question arises whether in any way we can amend the law to make mm. sure that at that stage of framing charges yes. once the court has applied its mind and finds prima facie the man is guilty whether at that stage we can do anything through uh, statutory amendments to thereafter disentitle a person of a heinous crime of more than X number of years sentence of punishment, corruption crimes, to, till this matter is cleared, not be allowed to stand. Perfect. That has to run hand in hand with the fact that there must also be a fast track for the disposal of such cases. I think if those two go in together, there might be an option. But finally, I think the buck stops with you, with me, and every yes. citizen. Because if anyone is responsible for this, it is we who are backing these people and the party gives that man the seat. Why? He's, the party is not going to give a losing candidate a seat. It's giving the candidate a seat because they feel he has the best chance. Yes. Now, if that man has a criminal record and he's charged in about 25 murders and rapes and yet he stands the best chance to win because the people want him. I ask you, who is the culprit? Who is the real culprit there? And I'm sorry, I'm yeah. not willing to say that we are exonerated of our duties as citizens. Yes. In fact, let me ask uh, Mr. Anil Kumar one last question of the Karnataka Congress. Mr. Anil Kumar, if we pick one particular constituency where you have fielded a criminal with a heinous crime charge against them, if we put out this information, and I, I'm, by we I mean citizens, I mean citizens of that entire constituency, if that constituency builds a reputation of rejecting criminals, will you stop fielding criminals? Of course, like, you know, any party in that case, not only the Congress, I personally feel, you know, no party would be interested in contesting some candidates who are being carried with the criminal records. See, as already been, lose. many experts have been talking about it, like, you know, already the experts been discussing about, like, how the charges goes and how it has been basically taking it to the next level in terms of the courts as well as the high courts and the Supreme Courts. See, there has to be an amendment which has to be <coughs> bought in. So no, that, there doesn't like, have know, to be an amendment. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Place, like, you know you what? Know, any, it is ridiculous that members of political parties are sitting here bold-faced telling me you have to bring in an amendment, only then we'll stop fielding criminals. First of all, who's going to bring the amendment? You have to bring the amendment. Who's going to stop fielding criminals? Uh, you have course, to stop fielding course, criminals. I would love to, now, what what love sort of thing is this that you are going you? to keep stealing See, like, cookies been, until you stop yourself? Stop fielding criminals. It can't be. It's not rocket science. No, no. See, like, you know, when we call criminals, you allow me to be like, judgmental. You know, there is a FIR which has been raised. Your people have One. gone to And the second jail. thing is, like, again, like, what, what I've been already said no, no, to you, you earlier you, also, the people see, who have been voting from long to them, they've been, uh, you know, asking us to be basically making this candidate as the... Uh, the MLA constituency so, so, candidate. So, okay, so one. you are saying you are saying like, you, know, when you are saying that you have like absolutely one, one, one no second. ability to think for yourself. Just like your colleague in the BJP says, if someone asks me for a ticket, I will give. You are saying if the citizens ask for a certain candidate, you will give. So, what is the what is the what is the job of this political party? Why do you have manifestos? Why so, do you make promises that, that you have like, no intention to keep? So, so, what you are going to do is just hand over tickets we, to people who can win elections?
who will then sit and watch pornography in the assembly hall because One. you have no like, no interest you know, no, no, in no. governance. We have to we have to understand the people uh, who have been voters. We have been voters, and the so, second thing is like we we wanted to bring these kind of amendments. Third thing is like when I'm talking about the recent amend which, amendment which we, we have been demanding for the uh, you know BJP is. Oh, bringing you are the in power. The Come on, Anil Kumar, please. I, you know what? I don't have the time for this. I literally don't have the time for this because I've run out of time on this show. But for Anil Kumar of the Karnataka Congress to sit on this show and say we've been demanding of the BJP, you've been in power for the last five years. Stop pointing fingers at the opposition. You have no right to demand anything from the BJP. You are in power. If you wanted to change something, you could have done you it yourself. Now, Mr. Srinath, like, if you, you start know, we, again, we I'm to going to continue to call out lists of, of names of people BJP, who have been in jail for corruption from your party, BJP who you've handed out tickets to today. Mr. Krishna Shetty went to jail for a scam. I don't have time for this. We have to wrap up this discussion, viewers, and I'll tell you why this is so important. Every ounce of anger that you have felt in the last one week boils down to what we talked about today. The fact that political parties will shamelessly and without conscience give tickets in elections to criminals. Criminals who have been accused of heinous crimes. Those people get voted into power. They then become lawmakers with the ability to change the laws to suit whatever crime they have been accused of. Consider the fact that in our parliament, they brought about a new law, they modified a law this year to backdate and allow them off the hook for political funding corruption since 1970. This is what happens when you put criminals in the seat. And it's not one party or the other. You'll be surprised at how equally they managed to do this. It boils down to us whether or not we are willing to allow these criminals into the seats of power where they will then bully the police, they will then bully the doctors, they will then bully the entire system to get away repeatedly with corruption and crime. We are, and I'm going to pledge this to you, we are going to use the sources of people like Major General Anil Varma of ADR who's been doing this for so many years and does such a great service to the country. We're going to bring you information on this channel of the number of candidates, the names, the faces, the party, the address, the constituency of the ones who are accused of rape or crime against women, the ones who are accused of heinous crimes. We will publicize this information till you can see it in your sleep. And then I beg you not to vote for people who are accused or who have charges against them of heinous crimes like murder, rape and corruption. We'll give you the information, we will arm you with that information across all parties. All you have to do is not to vote for criminals. Do not put a criminal in a position of power. Thanks for watching.